Hi, I'm Ben UI, and today I'm going to be telling you about how to create blueprints in Unreal Engine using C++. So we'll be creating a C++ base class and then creating a widget that uses that. So to start off, what do we kind of create today? So this sample will just be a random number generator widget. So the player will click on the get me another button um, and we'll show a random update the random number here and there'll be a random number shown on launch it's just a test example that we can use to create to show how c++ works okay so i've just created a sample base project here uh, there's no content there it's a c++ project so the first thing you want to do in your, in your project is uh, create a new c++ class so in our case, we want it to be a subclass of user widget. So we'll just call it RNG widget, short and simple. Unreal will warn us that we have to recompile our module before it will appear in the content browser. The simplest thing uh, is probably just to close Unreal and then we'll move to Visual Studio. I'm going to stop the current project. So in our solution manager, we can see that RNG widget uh, has been created, both the header and the CPP. So we'll just lay these out so we can see the CPP on one side and the header on another. Just bump the font size up so it's a bit easier to read. Okay, so if we go back to look at our example of what we're trying to create, we're going to need a a uh, widget for the text and a widget for the button. So we'll start off by creating those in the header. So so these don't need to be in public in order for them to be connected to the uh, blueprint widgets themselves. So I generally put them in protected just for safety's sake. So we're going to need a u text block. Oops widget uh, we'll call that random number label uh, I'm going to forward declare that so we don't have to include the header for text block when Visual Studio wakes up um, so this is where the well, the magic is so we declare it as a u property property and we need to mark it as meta equals bind widget this means that if there is a widget, if there is a widget in our blueprint subclass uh, of type text block and with this exact name random number label, uh, the two will be connected. Basically, yeah, that's the magic. So going back to our example, let's save that. We're also going to need a button. So create another property. This time it's going to be button. And we'll call that generate button so we all are going to need a u function uh, we're going to need a function to be called when we click the button but i'll go back to that when we get into our uh, cpp in a second we're also going to need a function that we'll call to actually generate the random number so let's just have a simple generate random function okay so Going to need to generate this random number when we are when the widget is first shown, and then also when the player clicks the button. So, in order for it to be uh, this function generate random to be called when we first create the widget, the simplest thing is to uh, do it in native construct. So, I'm using Visual Assist X here. Uh, there's a useful f uh, functionality called implement methods. So, if we type in native we can see all of these native functions. So these are functions that are implemented, that are declared in, in uh, user widget. So these are also exposed in blueprints pretty often. Uh, so we want native construct, which has no parameters. So we could have just typed it out. Okay. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to call our uh, generate random function there. This means it will be called once the widget is constructed. 
So if we fill out our generate random function, we're going to want to set the random number label. Whoops. Random number label uh, to some random variable value that we've chosen. So I'll just pick a number between 0 and 100. So random number label. So um, you text blocks take need f texts, um, f text, in order to be, yeah, to set their text. So I know that we can do as number to convert an integer into a into f text in a sim simple way. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's pretty much all we need to do for our generate random. So if we go back to our generate button, um, we're going to want to assign function to be called when it's clicked. The way we do that, there are a bunch of delegates inside new button. We can actually check out. Well, I'll show you here. So if we do on clicked, so this is the name of the delegate that we're going to want to look at. So if we hit uh, Alt G, it takes us to the definition of that. So we're inside a button, new button. Uh, it has some delegates here called on clicked, on pressed, on released, on hovered. Uh, we're going to want on clicked. So we can actually see what the signature of the function they're expecting is. So the button clicked event is just a simple dynamic multicast delegate with no uh, parameters. If we go back, so we're going to want to add dynamic. I want to point it to this class. We're going to create a new function called on generate button clicked. Let's implement that down here. It has no parameters like we saw before. Oops. And we'll just call generate random. And key thing is to also declare it here but mark it as you function. So that was all a bit quick. Uh, we've basically told our button when on clicked is uh, called. So it's, a, it's a delegate, so when it's broadcast, then call this instance's function on generate button clicked. And on generate button clicked is just calling generate random. I mean, we could have told it directly to call generate random, but in the interest of, simp of keeping things clear and explicit, this is the way we set it up. The only thing left we need to do is we need to include the headers for button and text block here. So the simplest way to do that is to hit add include and add include like that. And now we should be good to go. So we can compile, hopefully. And of course, I've typed something. I forgot the required ampersand at the front there. So now we should be good to go. Great. So now that we've implemented the C++, now we can create a Blueprint subclass of that and implement our visual side. So Unreal started. So we're going to want to create a new blueprint class. We're going to want to make it a subclass of RNG. As you can see, is a subclass of user widget. We'll call it WBP RNG widget. I call it WBP for just um, widget blueprint, the convention I've picked up. Okay, so the first thing we can notice here is it's requiring a widget called random number label of type text and another widget called generate button of type button. 
So let's start implementing that. I'll just throw in an overlay and box. Put text blocks. The title and the generator. This will be the text widget text block that we want to set our random number in. So that needs to be called random number table. So you notice I'm naming them up the top here. So because it's a type text block and because of the name is name matches, um, it will be hooked up. So we also need a button. And put some text in there. Right. Make it back so we can actually read. Okay. So this is actually where our random number will go. So like that. And a fun mini tip is you can oh wait, that's gone off the edge of the screen. Um normally everything inside these text blocks will get um, picked up by the localization system if you don't want it to be picked up by the localization system. So for example, in this case, uh, we don't really want our placeholder text here to be picked up. We can hit localizable no. So I don't know, it just keeps your localization files a little bit cleaner. Okay. Oh, we're going to name button, this button here to be in a button. Background behind the whole thing to keep it cool. Black. So this vertical box fills the whole thing. And then because we're going to add it to the screen, I want to make sure it sits in the middle of the screen. That's that should be it. So I find the easiest way to test these is if you've got your test level. Um, I mean, there's many, there's many smarter ways to do this, but just sort of the quick and dirty way is if you edit the that's blueprints, edit open level blueprint. So we're now inside our unnamed level. Uh, we want to get the player controller. Create a widget owned by the player. It's going to be of type RNG widget. So this is our blueprint. Uh, and we add it to the viewport. We want to make sure that gets called on begin play. Be it. Save our level, call it something sensible like MP. Now, if we play, we can see it's picked a random number for us. And if we hit generate, it keeps generating random numbers. So we can also see that if I go to Visual Studio, set a breakpoint. Inside generate random, I go back to Unreal, hit generate, back to Visual Studio. You can see it's actually hit the breakpoint here, um, and we can, oops, we can inspect the call stack and all of the the uh, local variables and stuff just like we would with any pure C plus plus program. That's kind of why I like to I like to use C++ for the kind of underlying logic behind my widgets. I think that covers about it. So uh, if you have any other questions or topics you'd like me to cover, uh, mention them in the comments. Uh, you can always message me on Twitter. Yeah, have a good day.